3D printed car parts. Your first reaction is probably that's not a good idea. And if you're thinking about, like most people, items like the brakes, parts that go on the engine, suspension components, you're probably right. That's probably not a fantastic idea to 3D print any of those parts on your home desktop 3D printer. But for a while now, I've been driving around with 3D printed car parts. So today I'm driving my 1993 Mazda Miata. It's not your ordinary Miata in any way. Uh, I've installed a flying Miata turbocharger system and a 1.8 liter engine out of a later uh, NA Miata. So it's got quite a bit more horsepower than it came with from the factory. I enjoy doing autocross racing and uh, would like to get it out and do some track days in the near future. So I have a uh, number of parts. Some of you, if you've watched my nylon printing video, uh, link up here, you'll, you'll notice that I 3D printed some parts for my car and I've not done a follow up on that. So today I wanted to follow up with that and show you some of the other items that I've printed on my car over the years and uh, how they work actually really well. So some of the items I've 3D printed on this car, we'll start with the dash panel. So this car originally came with a DIN and a half radio and a little slot for your cassette tapes, I guess. Those were kind of a thing, I guess, in the early 90s. And I knew I wanted to update the radio, so I installed a single DIN CD player, which I, I don't even use that. It's got, a, it's got Bluetooth. Who uses CDs anymore? And then I also added a phone charger, because obviously that's pretty important. And then with turbocharging, you also need a place to, uh, it, it has a custom, this car has a custom ECU in it. It has a Mega Squirt uh, ECU that I've tuned myself. And to do that, you need to be able to keep an eye on your air fuel ratio. So along with the air fuel ratio gauge, which if you're not familiar with that, it just basically measures the ratio of fuel to air into the exhaust system so you can properly tune the car and not run it too lean to. Uh... Now me and the mad scientist got to rip apart the block and replace the piston rings you fry. To uh, melt things basically, burn the engine up, or run it too rich that you're just wasting fuel and uh, making a mess of things. And yeah, there are three buttons directly next to the air fuel ratio gauge. Those buttons were for data logging, so I can record information to the custom ECU in the car and, and troubleshoot problems. Uh, there's a launch control button and also a traction control button. So the idea is I hit the launch control button and it would hold a lower RPM, a lower rev limit basically to launch the car at autocross events. Um, traction control obviously does what it sounds like, but it would be more tuned for like a race car and less for, you know, getting out of snow and things because this obviously doesn't drive in the snow. At any rate, it turned out pretty good. I think this was, a, my original thought was it was going to be a prototype and then I would, you know, redesign it and update it, maybe even machine it out of metal. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, I've been pretty happy with the results so far, but I think, uh, I think I might redesign it in the future and actually use those buttons because I found out the vehicle actually does all the, it data logs all the time. With a big SD card in there, there's really Really no need to you know selectively choose it I can you know if I have a problem I can go back and pull the data it's got a real-time clock the button doesn't do much but I thought it was a good idea to have it there uh, since this radio has Bluetooth that I also installed a microphone but being a convertible this is really not uh, really not an ideal car to have a phone conversation in if you know what I mean so the next thing I added uh, you, Mentioning data logging, you've got to have a place to be able to get to the SD card or plug in a USB to pull the data from the Mega Squirt. If you try to pull data directly through the USB, it can be a slow process to download. It's actually much quicker to unhook the SD card to plug it into your laptop and download the data that way. So what I did is I made an SD card mount and gave it, uh, also have a plug for my laptop to plug in while I'm live tuning. So uh, I needed a place to put those. I guess I could have buried them under the rug like a lot of guys do or just left the cord hanging underneath the passenger seat as I've seen. But having access to a printer you, you, and you know CAD skills, it's nice to have options to make uh, to make things nice. So I uh, made a mount and a little plug to cover up the USB. Uh, and then the SD card can pop right out and go in the laptop to pull data from. Finally, being a convertible with a roll bar here, uh, one thing that can be a challenge is the rear view mirror. Trying to see out of the back of the car and see what's behind me uh, is okay. Uh, 
the, the roll bar sort of obstructs some of that, the rear view mirror. So uh, on this car, actually, it's kind of unique in that the rear view mirror is mounted to to the, the uh, top of the windshield instead of actually being adhered to the windshield glass like most cars. So with that, if you lower the rear view mirror a little bit, you can actually get a little bit better perspective of what's behind you. Like that leaf. At any rate, um, lowering the rearview mirror allows you to get kind of below the roll bar and see a little more of a direct, directly behind you. Otherwise, you kind of have to angle the mirror down to see below the roll bar. And when you do that, all you're really seeing is the ground, not not the car or the truck, the semi truck that's about to try to run run you over. So uh, this was a simple print. Um, again, just a little part that spaces the rearview mirror down, and all you have to do is unscrew. There's two screws that hold it on after you pull the cover off, and you screw it on, and it spaces the mirror down about a half inch or so. Uh, I found it to be to be really nice, and I've actually. Um, sometimes at one point I had two of them on there to give it a little bit more. I, I can't decide which I like better, one or two. These were printed out of carbon fiber filled nylon, so they're actually quite strong and very temperature resistant. That's the other thing. A lot of people, if you only print in PLA, maybe you should should wait until you've perfected your ABS printing or get a printer that can print ABS really well because you really cannot put PLA in a car and expect it to last long. As soon, especially if you're in any environment where the summers get warm, a hot car is a great place. There's videos all over YouTube where people uh, show PLA parts melting in a car. So certainly you should definitely definitely look at some of the higher temp materials. Uh, I've had no problem with ABS. Nylon would also work. PETG I believe is also a higher temp material and you should have less problem with that as well. So uh, definitely uh, cons consider the material you're using for the application. And finally, uh, you guys want an update on the door shims that I printed for for my car in the How Strong is Nylon video. They've been on the car now for like three months, I think, and there's not really been a single problem. The only thing is, my car, it's, it's a 93, so it's like almost, almost 25 years old. So it still has quite a few rattles and shakes here and there. And it's also convertible, so it's missing some of the structure that makes a lot of other cars much more stiff and a lot quieter. So uh, I have not really noticed a huge difference. I know some guys swear by them. Maybe they're not, not a tight enough. Maybe this tolerance isn't quite right for me to notice the difference. The driver's door definitely sounds better when I close it. The passenger door, on the other hand, doesn't sound quite as good. I, I don't know that I notice any less rattles, but like I said, I've got a, a sway bar with solid end links in the back. That makes noise. My exhaust uh, has a little bit of a rattle as well to it. I need to, to clean that up. Maybe I'll do a future video on that if you guys are interested. Um, in general, I think 3D printing is a great application. If, if you're into the car hobby, I've had a lot of friends who are into cars and like working on their cars and race cars and do all that and they they kind of look at the 3D printer as a toy like what are you going to make with that that's useful on a car and so I hope this video really clarifies some of that and shows that you know there are applications now granted are they the most you know they're going to make your car are you going to give you 50 horsepower no are they going to help clean things up a little bit maybe make your car a little more reliable maybe make it a little bit just just a little bit nicer to use certainly uh, 3D printing has uh it's got you covered there. So uh, thanks again. If you like this video, hit subscribe. Um, lots more 3D printing and making content uh, coming up. Let me know in the comments below if there's any, uh, any questions you have or if you've got any other neat applications you think that uh, I should consider for 3D printing. If you've got a cool car part yourself that you've 3D printed, let me know about it. I'd love to hear about it. Follow my Instagram. I'm always a lot quicker at posting new projects and updates and, and just uh, other quick content than I am. YouTube takes a lot of time to produce a video, so Instagram's a lot of fun. I can throw something up pretty quickly. So certainly follow me there as well.